Hello lovelies, in this video the brilliant Dr. Redwoods is going to be taking you through all the specialised cells that you need to know for your A-level biology. Organisation. All matter is made up of atoms, so these are the smallest fundamental unit in the universe. So that's the smallest particle that makes up everything that we can see in every molecule. We need to be able to describe some specialised cells, how they are adapted to carry out their specific function. Erythrocytes, or red blood cells, their function is to carry oxygen from the lungs to respiring tissues. They have specific adaptations that allow them to do this job. So they are small, but flexible. They have this biconcave shape, which gives them a very high surface area to volume ratio, which obviously helps to increase the rate of oxygen diffusion into and out of the cell. And they don't have a nucleus and very few organelles, which means they've got more space for hemoglobin, which allows them to bind more oxygen. Neutrophils, otherwise known as white blood cells or a specific type of white blood cell, they are much larger than red blood cells. They have multi-lobed nucleus, which is why their nucleus looks like this slightly weird shape. This is part of their adaptation because it allows them to stretch. They can be attracted and they can move by chemotaxis, which means they can detect and follow chemical trails. This means they must have receptors in order to be able to do this. All of these features allow them, this cell to carry out its function, which is phagocytosis of pathogens. So being able to track down, trace a pathogen, and then to be able to stretch and engulf it. A spermatozoa, or a sperm cell. It has a special structure called an acrosome at the tip of the head, which contains enzymes that digest the layers of the egg cell. It is a gamete, so it has a haploid nucleus, which means it carries half of the number of chromosomes of a normal cell. This allows it to carry out fertilization and restore the chromosome number. It has many mitochondria in this mixed section, which allows it to produce a lot of ATP, which it will need to enable it to move. And it can move because it has a specialised tail or a flagellum, sometimes called an undulipodium. We can call it the tail, that's fine. And it allows it to obviously swim and move by producing kind of a whip-like motion. And the whole sperm cell shape is adapted for movement because it's very thin and narrow and allows it to kind of propel itself quite easily through liquid. All of these features, spermatozoa, allow it to carry out its function, which is to fertilise the egg cell. We also need to know some examples of specialised plant cells. First, we have the palisade cells. These are adapted to carry out photosynthesis. They are long and cylindrical, which allows them to pack in quite closely, as you can see in that layer of tissue in the leaf. They have large vacuole, which helps to push the chloroplasts to the edge of the cell. They have many chloroplasts to help absorb light energy for photosynthesis. And they have a cytoskeleton, and this allows them to actually move those chloroplasts around to try and increase the amount of light that they can absorb. Guard cells. These are found either side of the stomatal pores. Their function is to control the opening and closing of stomata, so they have a role in both gas exchange and also water movement within the plant. They do contain chloroplasts and you can see these green structures in the microscope image, but they do not carry out photosynthesis. The cell walls that are around the stoma edge of the guard cell are thicker and more rigid. They contain more cellulose, whereas at the tips and on the outer edge of the guard cells, the cell wall is actually a bit more flexible. This allows it to create this shape and open this way to open and close the pore. They also have lots of carrier proteins in their membrane to allow them to transport ions. Root hair cells, these make up plant roots and they have these long projections which gives them a large surface area. They have lots of carrier proteins in their membrane because they do a lot of active transport. They have lots of mitochondria in order to be able to produce the large amounts of ATP required for them to do the lots of active transport of mineral ions into the cell. They also have a large vacuole, which allows them to control water movement into and out of the cell. 
Xylem vessels are made of specialized cells that are joined end to end. They have no cytoplasm. This is to allow the ease of the flow of the water so it can be a continuous column moving up through the tube. The cell walls are strengthened with lignin, which forms in spirals to allow the plant some flexibility in the stems and branches. Lignin is a woody substance and it provides strength for the tubes and it keeps the xylem vessels open during the high pressure caused by transpiration. There are bordered pits in the walls of the cells. These are gaps in the lignin which allow lateral flow of water. This allows water to move between xylem vessels but also out of the xylem and into cells. The phloem is made of specialized cells that have end walls with perforations in them. These are known as sieve plates. Again, the cells are joined end to end to form the phloem vessels. This time the cells are living. The formation of lignin in the xylem causes those cells to die eventually, so they are just dead cells. Whereas phloem vessels are made of living cells, but the cells have reduced cytoplasm, no nucleus, and very few organelles. In order for them to function, they have to have companion cells associated with each sieve cell. And these cells do all of the living processes that the cells require. So they contain nucleus and they contain mitochondria, which allows them to produce ATP. And that allows them to carry out the processes such as active transport, which the sieve cells cannot do. Ouch! This is why in some videos I explain scratches.